Hey everybody and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and today is day 14. We've been talking about peace, what peace is, how to cultivate more peace, how to have more conversations with peace, how to take some steps forward in bringing more peace into your lives, and of course why peace is important. And you might think that what else could we possibly say about peace? But the truth of the matter is, is that there is so much for us to talk about because peace is something that, unfortunately, so many have become so accustomed to living outside of. And so we must have these conversations to bring our focused energy in, but also our focused attention. What happens when we're living in these worlds where we are bombarded with so much information and information that often may stimulate fear or worry? Um, there is an overabundance of energy that actually begins to numb us to the fact that we have fallen out of alignment with this energy of peace. What happens then is that because energy is always seeking out other energy just like itself, our focused attention constantly is feeding that energy, the energy of being anxious or stressed or aggravated or even irritated. And all of those energies are feeding a sense of being separate, separate from well-being, separate from safety, from being protected by life itself and all of the good that fills our lives. We lose sight of it. And yet it's those very things that are meant to feed us, to nurture us, to keep us on this path of remembering, first off, who we are, that we are co-creators of everything that we experience, and also that we have the ability to change it. We have free will. And that choice alone, once we start to initiate that, we can start to make dramatic changes in our lives. So one of the things that I'd like to talk about today is actually conversation. And it came up for me today because I found my, myself having conversations that were taking me out of my sense of peace. Now the first thing is, is that I know that if I haven't been so focused on cultivating and creating more peace in my life, I may have never even noticed. Those conversations may have taken me into even a downward spiral where I maybe would have found myself feeling distressed. And of course, it's not the way we're meant to live and we cannot be effective in our living if we are distressed. And so I started to sort of shed a light on the conversations that had taken me astray. First off, I realized that even a conversation as, as little as the weather can sometimes create stress. Of course, we know that there are horrible fires going on in other parts of this country. I'm blessed being in Massachusetts, where this isn't affecting me personally. And yet I'm very much aware of what's happening outside, outside of this area and outside of my life. But what the important aspect was about that conversation was that there was this moment that I recognized that I had to make a choice. And the choice was, could I continue with the conversation that was actually causing dis distress, causing more worry, 
causing me to be fearful or to ask myself the question, how can I see it differently so that I can be more purposeful and actually feed energy that has the capacity to create more peace. And we're going to get to why that's important in a moment. But in that moment, I also knew that it would require me to disrupt the conversation that I was having with someone and to make this sort of abrupt um, about face and declare that I no longer wanted to talk in that direction. Every time we are confronted with opportunities like this, um, no matter how seasoned you are in constantly pivoting your thoughts and conversations and actions and beliefs, there is a moment of hesitation. And that hesitation came, and I found myself momentarily kind of even at war. Well, if I do that, the conversation is going to maybe come to an abrupt end, I might offend that person, I might this, I might that. And thank God, I mean, this, you know, happens in like the blink of an eye, a nanosecond. And without really any question, I had this great clarity. Well, of course I'm going to pivot the conversation because nothing good can come from that conversation. Nothing. Number one, I have no control over what's happening in those areas. But what I do have control over are the thoughts, the energies that I am projecting out into the world. And the moment I reminded myself of that, something sort of magical happened within me and I found myself smiling. Now, if you were sitting across from me, you would have thought, I had lost it there for a moment, like that's kind of bizarre, right? Talking about this horrible thing one second and the next second I have a smile on my face. But I was so pleased. I was so pleased that I had remembered, oh my God, this is my responsibility. I take my beingness and what I'm putting out into the world very seriously. I prepare myself every morning energetically. I want to set the vibrational frequency of my day and what I'm creating and how I'm interacting with you and the whole world, the universe, because I know the ripple effects of it all. And then I was thinking, okay, so what can I deliberately put out into this world? And that is... Number one, these fires will come to an end. These protests, these bursts of violence, all of this, it will come to an end. We don't know when that is. But in that moment, it ended within me. I then was thinking, well, what else can I do? I can start to visualize rain. I can start to visualize rain just opening up, the skies just blessing every single aspect of this country and anywhere around the world that's in need of rain. Then my thoughts went to how many times, you know, we've done a rain dance, how many times we've prayed for rain, how many times we have done this or done that, or it was raining and we hopped up and down and we stomped in puddles and we, you know, got to take out our favorite umbrella or just went out in the rain to feel it. I know that I've done that a lot. I love that sensation of rain hitting my body. And so I found that my thoughts were actually, you know, sort of following this trail. And in that moment, it was so easy for me to make that pivot in the conversation and turn something where I had no control over 
into something that I now had every sense that I was controlling. I was controlling me. I was controlling what I was gifting to the world. I know that that energy will go out and it's going to seek out other energy just like itself. And I know that whenever I am cultivating those trails of thought filled with that emotion of happiness and joy and well-being, it also is going to take me to a place of peace. And I thought, wow, how magical that is. And so that's what I want to share with you today. I want to share with you how magical you are and how as you cultivate this new awareness about where your thoughts are going to take you and what kind of actions may follow those thoughts, I know that you're going to realize how powerful you are and that as co-creators of everything that we experience, we can do far more than we ever thought possible. And it all begins with like right here and right now. And the gifts that we have to give. Because I don't know about you, but I love feeling empowered like that and feeling happy and joyful and having these images dance around in my mind. And I love the thought of peace talks coming forward, tables being set up, where people are willing to sit down and talk about difference of ideas and opinions and not judge each other, but welcome the opportunity to just talk. And then, of course, my mind goes to passing the peace pipe and thinking about how civilized that whole concept is of sitting together. And, of course, it doesn't have to be a pipe, but the intention of that to create peace, to honor and respect each other, to come together with the intention of creating peace. Who would have thought that a little memory of stomping puddles would have taken me full circle to that? So, I want to invite you to come to heartshiftcoach.com if you haven't yet gotten your copy of Seven Ways to Cultivate Peace in You, or if you haven't gotten your copy of the Peace Pledge, I'm inviting you to do so because it really will help you to bring your focused energy, your thoughts. It'll shift the choices that you make the conversations that you have, and ultimately it will shift the experiences that not only you have, but all those around you that you love will have as well because you will have influenced their lives too. And so here I am, I'm ready to take my peace pledge offering it to you as I have every single day because you are so important to me and I know that we are in this together and if you're watching this I know you're part of my tribe and recognize how powerful you are and with that I hope that you will share it share it with those who need a reminder about who they are too but here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace throughout my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions,
taking personal responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, my choices, my conversations, my actions, and my experiences. I take this peace pledge, as you know, quite seriously, and I am passing it now, right now, from my heart to yours. Start with the peace within, and then share it with others. Peace in, peace out. Until next time, which will be tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and know how blessed you are. And of course, how loved and cherished. So, many blessings to you. Bye-bye.